Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's time to look at global stories making headlines in our national dailies. And joining me to review the papers is Professor Camille Sanifage. He's from the Department of Political Science, Bayero University, Kanu. Good morning, sir. Always a pleasure having you. Good morning, and thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Okay, so we'll be starting this morning with The Guardian, and The Guardian leads with leaving wage negotiations are hobbled by debts, poor execution in states, and there's a lot of analysis and, you know, numbers here. But I want to get your thoughts. Um, do you think that leaving wage negotiations are being hobbled by debts? Maybe Nigeria were owing too much, and we probably don't have enough money um, to pay this amount that the NLC and TUC are demanding for. Um, and then there's also poor execution in states. What are your thoughts on this one? Uh, really, the issue of debt is a, is a major problem to any policy that the government is going to embark on. But uh, given the conditions that we are in now, the issue of living wage is something that uh, will help us out of the problem. Because otherwise, uh, we are going to see protracted uh, labor crisis in Nigeria because of the deteriorating condition of uh, living standard. So I think uh, in spite of... Uh, the, the date burden, uh, the government ought to have taken uh, measures. And the measures will be they cut the cost of uh, governance so that at least what we have uh, we could be used to uh, address the issue of living wage. Otherwise, you see, it is a very big problem where uh, there is uh, wastages and a lot of overspending in government by the leaders, and now they now cite the issue of um, debt. I think that will bring uh, more chaos to Nigerian uh, political scene. they resolving it. So, yes, there is this issue of living uh, debt, but I think the government is not leading by example, by you know uh, having such outrageous expenses. And now you look at the minimum wage and say the issue of data will be a major uh, stumbling block to the issue. Okay, so, I mean, I'm just going to write off what you said with the government spending so much money. Um, however, the president has said there's no foreign travels for the next three months. And that is going to save us about a few billions of naira. And you wonder... How come foreign travels cost us this much? And why are we not doing anything to the cost of governance to ensure that? I mean, Nigerians are making sacrifices, right? Um, subsidy is gone. We had to make that sacrifice. The cash crunch, we had to make such sacrifice. Inflation right now is at, is at an all-time high. We have to make that sacrifice. So you see Nigerians making this much sacrifices. But then on the other hand, maybe the government isn't doing so much in making sacrifices as well. So when you think about foreign travels and you're like, how come we spend this much on foreign travels? And then for the next three months, we're not going to be having that. Do you think that is going to also help or have an impact with our debt profile? You see, uh, foreign travel, yes, is, uh, I think it's a tip, tip of the iceberg in terms of the wastages that we are talking about. It's one element and it is going to help, but uh, it is likely going to be just a drop in the sea. Uh, because by the time you address uh, only foreign travel, that is, um, is, going, that is going to be a, a little bit too little and too late. Because after all, the issue of foreign travel it's just for three months. That is what the president said. It was for three months. Even if, let's say, we are going to take it for the whole year, what we are going to say will not address because the, the issue of living wage is not just for a month or a year. It's going to be a long time. Usually when you sign such agreement, it lasts at least uh, four years or six years, uh, the lifespan of such uh, agreement before it is renewed. So I think... That is one thing. What the government needs to do is the way they are now talking about foreign travel, they should look at other previous expenses that we have. I already look at uh, the controversies around the budget padding. Mm -hmm. Unnecessary projects uh, are put in the uh, thing. And you have, you know, uh, over bloated budget, uh, which 
over to 1 point something trillion was added to what the executive uh, you know proposed so these are areas where the government has to look into in order to uh, stabilize the system like i say this issue of living wage if it is not addressed properly if it is not handled properly it is going to be a very serious uh, uh, problem we are going to see protracted labor crisis in nigeria and added to uh, the issue of inflation insecurity uh, you know uh, poverty and so many things by the time you add this uh, cocktail of uh, i mean you add uh, the issue of labor to the cocktail of crisis I think that is not going to go well for the system. Mm. All right, let's move over to another headline. This one is talking about the crisis in Okwama in Delta State, and it says residents battle hunger over Okwama military crisis. What are your thoughts on this one now? The military has made this an operation of zone, um, although many question why they are there, because you don't expect you to be investigating something that you are actively a participant to. And most times you, you would always find where bias comes in because you're there, you're part of, you're part of the situation. So right now residents are battling hunger what do you think about this do you think the military is supposed to be here or maybe another um, security agency is supposed to be doing this investigation and making sure that you know there's peace in the land you see in the past place the issue should have been handled by the police but now that it has happened i think uh, the leaders uh, opinion leaders in the area should also prevail on the use because um what happened is once you disgrace the military uh, by taking their arms, by killing them, by taking their uniforms and other issues, you are inviting trouble. So there is no way you can now pull the people okay. to now tell the leader, I mean the youth, to return the weapons, the military weapons, because uh, as far as military is concerned, when you take the uh, weapon or uniform, it's a total disgrace. And, and they will go to any length uh, in order to recover that. So unless that issue is addressed, we are going to see a prolonged uh, crisis in the area. And the, the unfortunate thing is that uh, this is becoming a trend. Whenever there is any issue, the military are involved which is supposed to be a police work. And whenever there is any issue like that, people tend to take loans in their hands. You know, security agents, no matter who they are, they are sacrosanct. They are not supposed to be attacked by the citizen. Okay, by doing that, uh, it's so barbaric, and uh, we are seeing what happened. Look at what happened in Odi long ago, you yeah. know, during this uh, public Then other things. So I think people should learn a lesson that... Uh, even if we have something, we shouldn't take the law into our hands. Just, uh, I think, was it yesterday also some police uh, the, uh, officials were also kidnapped and killed in Imo. So I think this trend is quite unfortunate. It is barbaric. We have to uh, handle things uh, carefully and in a more civilized way. Yeah. So I know that the military um, is to repel external and internal attacks. Um, however, we're not sure if they even have the jurisdiction to be able to con you know, conduct such, such investigation. And like you've said, it should be rightly for the police or even the DSS as well. Um, so, but we'll just see what happens in this. And obviously, we do not want any fire brigade approach like what has happened in Odi in the past. And we always need to look at antecedents and say, you know what, this has happened in the past. How do we make it better? How do we um, ensure that we're not having the same results? Because if you want to protect the lives and properties of Nigerians, you can't go through the fire brigade route. Um, but anyway, since we're still talking about you know, security and crisis, I want to take this one on The Guardian as well. And it talks about insecurity. Tilibu's government has failed. Enough is enough, says um, Northern Elders. What do you think about this? Do you think that um, Tinubu's administration has failed? I mean, we're not a year in office yet. Um, we're about 10 months. But if you were to, you know, just look at this administration, how much they've been able to accomplish in 10 months or what has happened or the effects, you know, they've had in this 10 months. How would you grade the Tinubu's administration? Would you say they failed or would you say it's something we should still look at and um, just give them some form of grace? What do you think?
Yeah, yeah. You see, to me, I think they are in, in the direction of uh, Pelua. Uh, because, of course, like you said, it's just 10 months, but 10, 10 months is uh, long enough to assess the problem. Because all the issues that the government promised are deteriorating by the day. Yeah. Okay? So I think this is a, a recipe uh, for Pelua. And uh, the unfortunate thing is that there is no concrete plan to address these uh, issues. Take, for example, issue of insecurity. Uh, of course, it is not the creation of uh, the present administration. They have inherited it, but at least one will want to see that even if uh, they haven't done anything, they, they will be at uh, where we were before. But things are becoming more and more complicated, uh, you know, than before. So I think to me, uh, we can say, even if we don't judge and say finally that it has failed, uh, to me, they are on course of failure unless they uh, take uh, action uh, to address these multidimensional security challenges in Nigeria. Mm. All right. Okay, so let's move over to the punch. Still on security matters, um, the major headline on the punch talks about the Kaduna abductions, and it says federal government plans school safety core as 137 pupils regain freedom. And the writers on this one says, Tinubu vows to end students' abduction and SCDC to train school safety core personnel. Kaduna government hails president, military puts pupils abducted at 137, says teacher sick. Um, what do you think about all of this? Now, we're happy that, you know, some of the students have been able to regain their freedom. But... Um, do you think this um, school safety core is the way to go? I mean, it's a good way because you have some, some of um, security architecture placed in these schools, but how many can we even put in all of our schools in Nigeria? And what, is, what do you think is the best way to go for us to ensure that our students are safe? Because you are going there to learn. You are going there to become better citizens, right? And how do you go there and you're being abducted? So what is the way? How can we tackle this? Head on, this insecurity crisis that we're facing in Nigeria, how do we tackle it head on? You see, on one hand, we everybody will be, should be happy that uh, innocent uh, pupils are, are released. Um, but um, the problem is more than that. We, we Nigerians are not likely going to know what actually transpired. In the past place, uh, you know, initially they say it was 287 yes. uh, people, uh, secondary school students and uh, primary school students. Now we are talking about uh, uh, only 137 which have been released. So, you know, people will want to know what happened. Was it actually 270, uh, 287 or one? Uh, 37. But whatever it is, it's a good thing. And the second thing that is worrisome is the fact that uh, now government is saying they are planning. This thing has become a, you know, a daily routine. Many schools have been adopted. Many, you know, since, you know, uh, from the time we had the, the Chibok girls yeah. uh, about four, uh, 10 years ago, to date, a, a countless number of students have been abducted. And now still the government is talking of planning to do that. Now that is a, a little bit reassuring, but the fact is, like you said, we have uh, 774 local governments in Nigeria, and uh, we have uh, only got know how many schools that we have from primary to yeah. uh, secondary schools, and how many personnel are you going to treat in order to, to do that, okay? So I think... Uh, it's just a way of reassuring people that the government wants to do something, but I doubt it very much if that will solve the problem. After all, we have so many security uh, agents, uh, agencies, you know, and yet these things happen. But there was a time, you know, something happened in um, Kasuna State, okay? I don't want to mention the town, but we were there, you know, on uh, accreditation. And uh, from the place that the things happened to a military checkpoint, it was not up to half a mile, and yet it happened. So by the time you have these 
saying you clan, you clan, people will get tired. That is what I said earlier on, that the government is on course of payload unless it takes action. We have been saying we are planning, we are planning, and nobody sees anything on ground. Plans don't actualize things unless you take step to, uh, you know, actualize them, to implement them. So it is a good thing that the government says they are going to have that uh, uh, structure, but uh, I think um, in the usual thing, uh, you know, uh, we'll end up, up, the, up to the end of the tenure of the government, the issue will remain planning, planning, and nobody will see any action on the ground. So I just have a little question on this topic. You know, a few weeks ago, we talked about state police. Do you think uh, having state police would actually even help with the security architecture of each of these states or even each of these schools? Because that way they know their terrain. Um, instead of just saying we want to, uh, the NSCDC needs to train, you know, some safety core members, do you think having state police would actually facilitate the, the security for the students in each local government area because they know the way, they, they know the place very well, they know their terrain, they know the nook and crannies of, you know, wherever they are? Yeah, in a way, you know, having state police will, will help in that problem. I mean, the program earlier on that, it is going to generate another uh, set of uh, problems. Okay? Mm. Uh, to me, I think what the government should have done is now to decentralize recruitment of, uh, you know, uh, police. Uh, you know, we now recruit police in their own local government and assign them, but we have the control at the center. That way will minimize the use of uh, police by uh, the governors. At the same time, it will also uh, ensure their own uh, area. Instead of posting, you know, somebody from down south uh, to north, where he doesn't know the trend, he doesn't have you know the language, the culture, and these things, and so on. And the other thing is. They, we also look at how many of our police are assigned to big men, okay? You got some local governments, majority of them, except in the headquarter, that is where you can have about uh, a division and, uh, office, maybe contain about 30 people also. In a local government, uh, you know, you have, if you take the average now, how many police do we have? And look at the standard, how many police, uh, what is the ratio of police to civilian in, in, in any place? What we have is too uh, small, and they are not uh, properly equipped, they are not properly paid, and most of them are used to support uh, big shots and uh, to, you know, will be concentrated in the capital. And even in the capital, they are concentrated in uh, certain business areas, you know, you keep them there. So by the time you have all these things, unless you take a holistic look at the security architecture, when you say you are planning, you are not going to uh, get any result unless a holistic, uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, system approach has been taken to address all these multidimensional uh, security challenges. Okay. So let's move over to some economic matters. There's a small headline at the top that says, $7 billion FX. OPS threatens to sue banks over rejected applica applications. So on this one now, um, you know, the, well, the... <laughs> Um, Cardiso had come out to say they've cleared out the backlog of about seven billion dollars. But then uh, the organized private sector of Nigeria is saying there's still some that are lingering, and right now they're threatening to sue these banks um, for the FX backlog that has not been entirely cleared. What do you think about this one? You see, the, the, we are used to this issue of passing the buck. This will blame this, and this will blame. Uh, the other. You know, it was very hopeful when the, the government said they have cleared, they come out and said they have cleared the uh, backlog. And now we are hearing a different story that mm. uh, uh, it has not been uh, paid. After all, if had it been, it has been paid, uh, the issue of going to the court or suing will not be there. So I think uh, this is a major problem that uh, we have to look at and it is part of, uh, you know, uh, the self-denial that we have, perhaps, uh, you know, but I'm not going, uh, it's not perhaps really somebody is not telling the truth, it's uh, stretching uh, the, the parts a little bit. 
either that tobacco loss has not been paid or it has been paid and uh, some people have cornered the uh, back by law. So whatever it is, blaming game will not take us out of the, the problem. So I think what we need to do is to actually address this uh, issue uh, so that we, the, the people concerned, the agencies, the government, and whoever it is, let this backlog be settled, and now we face the challenges ahead. Otherwise, uh, we are creating mountains of problems. There is a backlog, and there is current crisis, and there will be more corruption, and things will be uh, become more and more complicated as we uh, wait and see before we address the issue. So one thing, um, especially talking about the FX backlog, right? In Nigeria, we import almost everything. So we really, really need this foreign exchange one way or another. Um, so, I mean, you've said we need to clear it, but how can we, what are like some, some key strategies? Because we're hearing all of these things. It's almost like every day you wake up in Nigeria, Nigeria is in debt. Either there's a backlog that's not being cleared or the, um, the state governments are owing the CBN. There's just a lot when it comes to like our financial architecture. How can we start to look at it? and ensure that we're moving Nigeria like a business. I'd said this earlier um, when I was introducing the show. You know, every business needs to be profitable. You need to look at things to say, okay, this is how we're moving. This is our goal. What is our vision statement? What is our mission statement? What are the action plans? If you were to talk about Nigeria and when it comes to our whole economic um, policies, how do you think you know, we can start to have some key strategies to ensure that we're moving forward? You see, uh, the thing is, government is in denial. Mm. Uh, they know by trying to de regulate our own economy, an economy that is virtually dependent on exportation, mm. uh, we are not going to face the uh, problem. So unless the government address that direction, no matter what policies they have taken, this is just going to be a fire brigade approach. Once you have it, you now try to mend this, and then another thing will come out. You see, where you import and you now do value your money, you will always be in debt cycle. And the fact is, this reality is not only in Nigeria. There is no country uh, that has, uh, a developing country that has developed by taking the measures we are taking now. So unless the government take the bull by the horn and decide to do away with this issue of deregulation, I think we will remain will be going deeper and deeper into the tra uh, trap. And uh, by the time you do it, uh, already look at our own currency. is the third poorly performing currency in the world. And yet we are denying the fact that we are going into a problem and we expect to get out of it. To me, I think the best way out of the government is for the government to look at what put us into that uh, where we are now and backtrack and take a, a you know positive step to get us out of it. unless we do that uh, i don't mm. think we are going to address the problem all right well moving over to the business ng there is a small headline that says naira appreciates by 340 naira against the u.s dollars in four weeks so i'm sure this is some this is some form of respite. This is something that people are happy about because, like I said, we, we use FX for almost everything. So this should be some great news. But I want to take the major headline on the business engine before I let you go. And this says, Labor Party crisis deepens as party members demand for a brewery's resignation. So last um, week, there was the NLC that had gone to shut down the headquarters of the Labor Party, also demanding a brewery's resignation. Um, but this week now, we're even seeing more and more and even party members are also calling for this what do you think about the whole crisis in the labor party you see uh, this is a, a common thing with our own uh, political system i mean with our own political parties once the parties are outside uh, power these issues will keep on cropping okay and uh, the fact is that yes the individual has his own problem but to me i said removing him will just not solve the internal uh, problems within the party. 
Uh, okay. But it will solve uh, for quite a short time, but it is going to be a major thing. After all, when you look at uh, the politicians, they are all there uh, to make uh, money out of the system, not to serve in the system. So by the time you uh, personalize the issue around one person, uh, you may end up, uh, you know, compounding the crisis in, in the party. Uh, temporarily, yes, there will be relief. But I think uh, when you look at uh, other major parties from what happened when they are outside the power, you know, uh, look at what happened to other parties. So uh, Labour would not be any different from that, uh, unless, unless uh, you know, uh, we take measures uh, to address that internal crisis. To me, I think personalizing is just... Uh, uh, beating around the bush is not actually uh, going to address the uh, problem. Well, we hope that um, whatever the issues or whatever the crisis they are facing right now, it's being resolved. Um, so that's just what, what we would want and what we would expect for even any political party. Instead of it to escalate, we we'll definitely want them to be able to just resolve it within themselves. But anyways, this is where we have to wrap it up on the paper review this morning. We want to say thank you for coming and sharing your valuable contributions. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. That was Professor Kamilu Sanifagi from the Department of Political Science, Bayero University, Kano. And we've just been reviewing the papers and taking stories, making headlines in our national dailies. We'll go on a short break and when we return, we'll be looking at our hot topic. Well, this talks about the Nigerian constitution, so please stay with us. <laughs>